Came back to Cape Ray, Jill, in 81. Your mother was dying. Yeah. And I don't remember what you spoke on, mm. but I can still see you leaning over the lectern mm. and saying to 200 students from 22 countries, 19 denominations, mm -hmm. God loves you to distraction. Mm. And you know, that was a surprise to me. Huh. I'd been a believer for three years, yeah. but that I just didn't think God would think quite that huh. passionately about mm. me. But I believed you, mm. and I've treasured that mm. all these years. Wonderful. And I keep hearing from many of our guests, a lot of them pastors, full-time ministers, yeah. that this is a big issue, uh, particularly in the West and in our evangelical pews. People don't really believe mm -hmm. that God really loves them. Mm -hmm. All your years of pastoring, mm -hmm. are you seeing this too? Well, I think part of it is the brokenness in so many families. Yeah. Uh, many of them don't know how to love, they don't know how to receive love mm -hmm. because they've not really exper experienced sure. uh, love. Uh, and even if we've experienced human love, uh, <laughs> the love of God is holy love, you see. That means it's something else. Yeah. It is totally distinct. It is utterly separate from anything that we know. And so we have to educate people about this. It's a broken world. I don't know about Canada, but it's like an avalanche, the brokenness. And 10 years ago, um, I asked our children how many intact families they had within their friends, and they couldn't think of one, and that was a long time ago. And so our children are going to marry, uh, our grandchildren are going to marry into brokenness. From brokenness, we have a divorce in our family. And uh, it's a new world. And that brokenness um, is worked out in their 20s, actually. And it is resulting in a loss of faith. Mm -hmm. Even if they've been brought up in church, the Barna is telling us that our 20-somethings are losing their faith in college. But a lot of it is to do with trying to deal with the brokenness that they're coming from. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot to do. And so talking about the love of God, uh, a love of a father, or even a love of a husband and wife is, is foreign to them. They haven't seen it, they haven't experienced it. Well, the, the trouble is that we, when, 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 when people learn about God, uh, it, it's usually working from human experience, ballooning it up so they get an image of God. But a lot of young women particularly will tell me, don't talk to me about the fatherhood of God. I don't want to know about God because if God is anything like my father... Mm -hmm. I don't need one. I don't right. need him and certainly if he's, if, if he's God as well, that frightens me, you see. But we, we, we've got it the wrong way around. We, we, don't, we lo don't learn about God's self-revelation from just looking at human beings and sort of exponentially ballooning it up. What we do is we, we take the time to learn what God in his word has said about himself. Mm -hmm. And then from God, we look at human fatherhood and it's completely reversed. Uh, in, in our in our Melton culture, mm -hmm. and that's that's dangerous, because it leads to wrong conclusions. I, I'm so thankful that you have together another vehicle for getting truth into the hearts of a world that desperately needs God. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know about telling the truth. Huh. Your radio ministry, it's also an internet Bible teaching broadcast. You do it together? Mm -hmm. Well, we do it not speaking uh, one after the other. We, but you're both involved. Oh, and our youngest son now. Peter. Who, has a pastor in, who is a pastor in Dallas. So the three of us are the three voices now. And we do a third, a third, a third. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful to have Pete... Pete um, taking over, he's now president of Telling the Truth. Let me ask, hmm. 
biggest challenge of your ministry, life, and career? Is that a toughie? Go for it, Jill. You bring such a wealth of experience. Yeah. I, think, I think the challenge is just to go on loving the Lord with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to keep fresh, and to keep my roots in the river, and to do everything I tell other people to do, which is uh, to love him to distraction. <laughs> and to love him more and more and more. And that has to be the biggest challenge. Gift doesn't age. Spiritual gift doesn't age. Passion doesn't age. Heart doesn't age. Relationship with God doesn't age. We age, but that doesn't. And I think that the biggest challenge is to remember that and to just, just go for it. Uh, just have faith enough to finish, which is another of the books that I, I wrote. Um, finish strong. Mm -hmm. But what else is there? I mean, I can't imagine. People just keep saying to us, when are you going to stop? When are you going to stop? Why? And if we stop, what would we do? You know, I mean, what else is there? And God has gifted us. We're um, aged now, but I don't feel aged inside. And of course, we're not outwardly. We're, you know, Paul talks about the tent, and we're losing a few tent pegs <laughs> as the tent collapses, you know. But um, I tell you something, I, there's so much more to do, and there's so many people that haven't heard. I was talking to Wes Stafford, who I happened to sit next to on the plane coming in. Compassion. And my daughter is on USA. the board of Compassion. Mine as well. Oh, his daughter as well, oh, yes. Good. Judy. Mm -hmm. And, um, he, he was just saying how um, the older he gets, the more urgent he feels that there's still so much left to do. And uh, he asked me my story, and I was telling him. And um, he said, you know, did you ever think you would live as long as you are living? And I said, I never really thought about it, actually. But I came to Christ hungry, looking, desperate inside. You would never have known it by looking at me and my behavior and my life and my looks. But I was screaming, why doesn't somebody explain this to me? If only someone would tell me. I was reading a Lewis book. I was at Cambridge. He was a professor there. And uh, his books were just absolutely mesmerizing to me. And he was a professor there as you were studying? Well, he was, I never met him, yes. He, but, but there were 12 colleges at Cambridge, but he had just been converted at Oxford and taken the chair at Cambridge, in my years at Cambridge. And I was reading his book um, on heaven and hell. And uh, I came to that wonderful quote, there is a door opened in the pitiless walls of the world and one day we shall get in. And I just got up in my room, I was on my own at Cambridge, and I, I couldn't put it down. And I was saying, what is this door? Is it death's door? And, who will get in and will I get in? And then I just stopped and I said, if only someone would tell me. And I believe the world is full of people like me. They haven't rejected Christ. They haven't had a chance. They haven't heard. I want to live as long as I can and get to them because they're waiting. They're just waiting. They're the Macedonian woman and man and boy and girl. And so that drives you, you know? I mean, why stop? What on earth would we stop for? Is Jill speaking for you yeah. too, Stuart? I'm sorry? Are you, is she speaking for you as well? Why stop? <clears throat> yes, I, I'm, I'm writing a, a little book at the moment called Improving with Age. And uh, I, I build it on what Dr. Vernon Grounds from Denver Seminary said. He said that aging is diminishing. And it, it is. Uh, as you get older, one thing goes after another. Obviously, your eyes go and your and your hearing goes, etc. So your teeth go, and uh, then you downsize, and then they won't let you drive anymore. They take, it's diminishing, you see. Uh, and usually, when we talk about senior people, we we talk if we talk about them at all in the church, and m many of them, uh, many seniors in the church now feel marginalised. They feel that it's, uh, they don't want them there, and it's all about youth, you see. Uh, and, and so I'm writing for them and saying, look, 
Uh, of course, it's true, uh, aging means diminishing in one dimension. Outwardly, we're wasting away. The other dimension is inwardly, we're being renewed. Day by day? Day by day. Yeah. And so I want to write about what is it about getting old that gives you the opportunity yeah. to be what you've never been? What is it about being old that gives you the chance to do what you've never done? What is it about being old that allows you to accomplish what younger people can't possibly accomplish? In other words, what, why not think positively about this? And so I'm, I'm going to call it Improving with Age, and the subtitle probably will be This is Not About Fine Wine and Cheese. <laughs> oh, we can't wait for that one. You okay. know, I should have bragged on you a little oh. bit more, Stuart. When you came over uh, to take on the senior pastorate at Elmbrook, they had a weekly attendance of 300. You took it to 7,000. I think they're 10,000 today. Is that right? Uh, it's just I, I really booming. don't know. We, well, we, we focused on planting other churches, and so we planted 10, 10 other churches other in the city. Other congregations. Mm -hmm. Just wonderful. And you're still loaded, just mm -hmm. loaded. I heard a recent statistic, 70% of Christian leaders don't finish well. Mm -hmm. I don't think you are at risk. Mm -hmm. uh, Holiness Without the Halo mm -hmm. is, is a book I just can't wait to read this. I'm sure you feel the same way. And one of your little treasures that I especially love, Jill, is the one you're holding. It's called Faith Dancing. And I uh, found a little prayer in there that I think is very appropriate for this season of your life and ministry together. Would you read it? Yes, it's a prayer I wrote after a little poignant time with my husband. Uh, when God gave us permission to be together for a little while. And I just had this, one of my conversations with God on the steps of my soul in the deep place where nobody got, okay? And I was talking to the Lord and I said, Lord, thank you for the years you've given us to be together in heart, mind, and purpose, if not always in the body. No regrets, Lord. Help us both to make every moment count when we are privileged to occupy the same small space on this little swinging planet. You know, you come first, Jill. And I believe he said, I know I do. I will make every moment count. I love you. Be blessed in your love for me and for each other. See how I will enlarge your hearts. See how I will bless your love. And he does, and he is. Reverend Doctors Stuart and Jill Briscoe. What a treat.